All right, you have been listening to the Senate hearing for the Supreme Court nominee, Ketanji Brown Jackson. Uh, they are going to take about a 15 minute break. They'll be back before uh, they resume the hearing and then a lunch later on this afternoon. Standing by for us is Senator Marsha uh, Blackburn, member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. She will be questioning the judge uh, in just a few moments. You have not had the chance yet, Senator. By the way, I'm Sandra Smith, and welcome to our coverage of these uh, Senate hearings ongoing uh, this morning and on into the afternoon. There will be two days of the questions. And, Senator, ahead of this, uh, you have penned an op-ed on FoxNews.com. Biden's Supreme Court nominee, America Deserves Answers, for, from Katanji Brown Jackson. You've seen some of the questions and answers so far. What have you made of them? One of the things that we know, Sandra, by going through her writings and her speeches is that she has taken positions that are right in line with the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Now, that is something that is of concern to me, concern to me because we know that Tennesseans want to see a constitutionalist jurist. They want somebody who is going to be fair. They feel like Lady Liberty is blind. Lady Justice is blind. They want equal access to opportunity to the courts and equal justice for all. So when they hear some of this and they read some of this, they do have concerns. They have concerns about parental rights, one of the top issues that is before so many people. Whether you're in Virginia, whether you're in San Francisco, you want children to be taught facts in school. You don't want them indoctrinated. They're concerned about Judge Jackson in 2015. She gave a lecture talking about critical race theory as one of the components to consider. When you are making decisions on the bench, 2020, she gave two speeches referencing this. She serves on a school board and has lauded progressive education. Now, for some of the women that I talked to, that is a red flag. They want answers on that. So we'll, as I said yesterday in my opening, we will discuss this with her. They're also very concerned about the issue of crime. Therefore, they're very concerned about how she has gone light on criminals in her sentencing. She, people are very concerned about how when it comes to um, child predators and pornographers. She has given them sentences below the minimum. Okay. On average, going about five years below. And we have heard you make that case. We heard you do so in your opening statement yesterday, Senator. I'm sure you've seen it. The New York Times has taken you on uh, this morning in a piece echoing conservative grievances. Blackburn miscast Jackson's views, uh, saying that you took quotes out of context as she levied a blistering attack against Judge Kataji Brown Jackson. We will hear your questions uh, to her in a short time from now, and we'll certainly yes. see, and all of us will be able to see how she answers them. In your piece, though, you give her a lot of credit for what you say are her impressive credentials. And and you also uh, stand by your vow, along with your Republican colleagues, uh, to demand a thorough, thoughtful, and fair process. Because, of course, we can rewind to Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing. Just here was a few moments of that. I welcome everyone to this confirmation hearing on the nomination of Mr. Judge Chairman. Brett Kavanaugh. Mr. Chairman. To serve as associate justice, Mr. Chairman, on the I'd like Supreme to be recognized for a United question States. before we proceed. I extend hearing, a very warm welcome we to Judge Kavanaugh. have not been given an opportunity to have a meaningful his wife, hearing. Ashley, on the Mr. Proud Chairman, of if, Judge if we cannot be recognized, I move to adjourn. From Judge Kavanaugh, later this afternoon. Move, Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. And obviously, there are several moments where Lindsey Graham decided to point out uh, the night and day difference to how Ketanji Brown Jackson is being treated in that room by Republicans, comparing not just to the Kavanaugh days, but to Amy Coney Barrett as well, using the example of religion and how Amy Coney Barrett uh, was certainly pressed beyond where um, some might have thought that she should be, uh, and using that as an example in that room a short time ago, Senator. 
Yes, indeed. And, you know, we are going to give her a very thorough vetting. The questions are tough. Uh, she does need to answer. You mentioned the New York Times article. You'll notice, Sandra, they weren't able to refute anything that I had said. They wanted to argue about context here or there, but I gave Judge Jackson her words. Likewise, uh, we have made certain that faith, knowing that is important to Judge Jackson as it was to Judge Barrett, uh, we have respected that. And what you're seeing carried forward is how a hearing ought to be carried forward for a Supreme Court justice. These judicial appointments are unlike any other federal office. They have a life lifetime appointment. So this is the one time that the American people are going to be able to hear from and see what this judge's background is before they ascend to the federal court. So it is our job to comb through that, which is what we've done, to come up with items of concern through statements, writings, and decisions, and then to question her on why she chose to travel a certain route. Senator Blackburn, we appreciate you stepping out of that room to join us. Thank you very much. You got it. Take and care. And we will see your questions uh, to Katanji Brown-Jackson a short time from now. Appreciate it.